In 2020, an electric vehicle startup called Canoe went public by merging with a SPAC. Around this time, numerous EV startups came public, promising to revolutionize the automobile industry. But Canoe drew particular attention due to the unique design and innovative skateboard technology of their cars. The futuristic, boxy design stood out from any other EV under development, and with an estimated starting price of just $35,000, it promised to be one of the most affordable. Three years later, it's safe to say that the company has not lived up to the hype. In 2023, Canoe delivered just 22 vehicles and generated a paltry $900,000 of revenue. That same year, the company spent $1.7 million, or almost double its revenue, to pay for the CEO's private jet. Canoe is burning cash at an alarming rate. By their own admission, they are likely to go bankrupt in the near future unless they can secure additional financing. This may be difficult to do now that their stock price has fallen 99%. So what went wrong? Canoe appeared to be one of the most innovative and promising EV startups. Why did it end up being such a complete and total failure? This video was brought to you by Bellroy, an Australian brand which makes some of the highest quality personal accessories I've ever tried. If you like to travel as much as I do, Bellroy's accessories are a must have. One of their coolest products is their travel wallet, which is unlike any wallet I've ever tried before. One of my biggest annoyances with traveling internationally is that my passport won't fit into a normal wallet. Bellroy's travel wallet is big enough to fit your passport into. You can put all of your important things in one wallet, making them far easier to keep track of. It's made with premium environmentally certified leather, giving it a durable, high quality feel. There are four card slots for quick access in the front, and another three card slots on the inside for cards you don't use as often. The coolest part of the wallet is that behind the main cash compartment, there's a hidden compartment that you probably couldn't find unless you already knew it was there. Finally, they include a small metal pen that slides right into the middle of the wallet. This is very useful when you're traveling internationally and need to fill out various customs forms at the border. So if you're looking for a travel wallet or a whole host of other urban minimalist accessories, make sure to click our link in the description to get 10% off anything on bellroy.com. And now back to the video. Canoe was co-founded in 2017 by Ulrich Kranz, a former BMW executive. He was CEO at the time the company went public in 2020. By this point, Canoe had already built multiple prototypes and developed what appeared to be some impressive technology. Their main innovation was a so-called skateboard design. The battery is placed inside a flat section at the bottom of the car with the wheels attached. This gives the appearance of a giant skateboard. All of their models would be built on top of this same skateboard. This makes it very easy and inexpensive to develop new models. The modular design of Canoe cars will also allow customers to significantly customize them to meet their individual needs. The small electric motor and lack of an internal combustion engine allows for a very spacious interior relative to the car's small dimensions. Canoe plans to launch three vehicles over the coming years. A small minivan called the Lifestyle Vehicle. This was to be released in 2022. A delivery van to be released in 2023. And a sports car to be released in 2025. Instead of selling cars, Canoe plans to offer them as subscriptions. You don't need to make any down payment. Instead, you make monthly subscription payments. This would supposedly help them with consumers who are new to EVs and aren't ready to make the commitment of buying one. One of the biggest problems with EV startups is they need to burn huge amounts of money up front to build their factories and ramp up production before they can ever hope to make a profit. Canoe claimed that they were in a much better position and their path to profitability could potentially be much quicker. Because their skateboard technology is so revolutionary and Canoe has so much expertise in vehicle design, other automakers would be willing to pay Canoe to help design their own EVs. In their 2020 SPAC presentation, Canoe said they expected to make $120 million of revenue from these engineering services in 2021. They already had a deal with the Korean auto giant Hyundai. Deals like these could potentially represent high margin revenue opportunities that could be realized very quickly. Finally, instead of building their own factories, Canoe would partner with a contract manufacturer. This will significantly reduce their capital needs and would allow them to bring their cars to market far faster than would otherwise be possible. Investors bought into this story and the company was able to go public by merging with a SPAC at a $2.4 billion valuation. Within months of the SPAC transaction, things at Canoe were already not going according to plan. In March of 2021, it was reported that their much vaunted deal to design cars for Hyundai was terminated. Instead of generating $120 million of revenue in 2021 as they predicted in their SPAC presentation, Canoe generated zero revenue. Shortly thereafter, CEO Ulrich Kranz unexpectedly resigned along with the company's chief financial officer. Eventually, both men were charged by the SEC in relation to the company's SPAC projections. They projected $120 million of revenue in 2021. These projections were based on two projects that Ulrich knew were no longer active or feasible. 
This is likely referring to the Hyundai deal. Ulrich knew that the Hyundai deal was not going to happen, but included it in the revenue projection anyway because this would look better to investors. So why did Hyundai pull out of the deal? Perhaps Canoe's skateboard architecture isn't really so great as they want you to believe. While they had some cool looking prototypes, their designs were still untested in a mass production scenario. Ulrich was replaced as CEO by Tony Aquila, who previously served as the company's executive chairman. Aquila made a number of significant changes to the company's strategy. Firstly, he abandoned the plan of the subscription model and decided to just sell cars outright. They claimed the lifestyle minivan would start at $35,000. Canoe also ended its relationship with its contract manufacturer. Perhaps the contract manufacturer was not able to build the cars at a cheap enough price to be commercially viable. Instead, they built their own factory in Oklahoma. They received various incentives from the state, and by building their car domestically, they may be able to qualify for the $7,500 EV tax credits. However, the decision to build their own factory significantly delayed the production timeline. By 2022, things were not looking good. Canoe had not yet sold a single car, and they were quickly running out of cash. In July of 2022, they received their first large order from Walmart. The retail giant agreed to purchase 4,500 of their electric delivery vans with an option to buy up to 10,000. Walmart would use the vans to deliver e-commerce orders. This was viewed as a lifeline for the struggling company, and their share price jumped 50% on the news. The problem is, their factory in Oklahoma was not yet ready to begin production. So how were they going to fulfill Walmart's order? They decided to move their headquarters to Benton, Arkansas, the same city where Walmart is headquartered. They would also build a small production facility in Arkansas to build the Walmart delivery vans. This seemed like a strange decision. Why build a new factory in Arkansas? Why not expend those resources to speed up construction at the Oklahoma factory? Sure enough, building a new factory in Arkansas just for Walmart proved to be unviable. So Canoe canceled the Arkansas factory and said they would partner with an undisclosed contract manufacturer to make the Walmart vans. To date, Canoe has yet to deliver a single vehicle to Walmart. Here we can start to see one of the main problems with Canoe. They keep changing their plans. Every time they do this, it further delays their delivery schedule. It gives the impression that their senior management team are in over their heads and have no idea what they're doing. In July of 2023, Canoe finally made its first deliveries to a customer. They sold three of their lifestyle minivans to NASA. NASA will use them to transport astronauts to the launch pad for the upcoming Artemis moon mission. With only three vehicles delivered, this was little more than a publicity stunt. By this point, Canoe was still a long way off from being able to mass produce any vehicle. In November of 2023, Canoe unveiled a new pickup truck called the American Bulldog. It seems a bit strange to announce a new model when they haven't even begun mass production of any of their previous vehicles. Canoe has not provided an expected delivery date for the Bulldog and has given almost no details about its technical specifications. In the fourth quarter of 2023, they began delivering vehicles to customers, including a custom work van maker called King Bee, a van rental company called Ziba, and the city of Oklahoma. In 2023, Canoe produced a grand total of 22 vehicles. They provided disappointing 2024 revenue guidance of $50 to $100 million. They also say they expect to burn between $45 and $75 million per quarter. This equates to about $200 million of cash burn for the full year of 2024. With only $36 million of cash on hand, the company appears to be on the brink of bankruptcy. Shortly after Canoe reported earnings, Reuters released an article titled EV Startup Canoe's 2024 Revenue Forecast Disappoints. The article explains that Canoe's revenue guidance was well below analysts' expectations. Canoe has warned for the eighth straight quarter about its dwindling capital and ability to continue as a going concern without additional funding. The EV industry has been struggling as high interest rates to curb inflation have soured consumer appetite for EVs. This has prompted automakers, including Tesla, to slash prices. Canoe, a supplier of electric delivery vans to Walmart and crew transportation vehicles to NASA, first warned investors in 2022 of substantial doubt about its ability to remain a going concern and has since been raising capital to support production. In a post-earnings call, CFO Greg Etheridge said, quote, we will continue to make progress towards accessing additional forms of debt and other non-dilutive forms of capital as we move into 2024, unquote. But with uncertain demand and several startups shutting shop, investors and EV makers have grown cautious, in turn making it difficult for firms to raise more money. Everything in the Reuters article is factually true, but when Canoe's PR team read this article, they were not impressed. They responded with a bizarre post on LinkedIn. They wrote, quote, we are more than a little disappointed that Reuters did not give us an opportunity to comment on their most recent stories on Canoe. 
Had Reuters called Canoe for comment, we would have told them that we raised $324 million in 2022 and $288 million in 2023, and we are currently in discussions with several entities and individuals about investing in the company this year. We would have also told them that we have begun manufacturing, expect to step up our manufacturing effort this year, and have a backlog of orders, and that we are not in the consumer market, we are in the commercial market." Unquote. If you read carefully, Canoe doesn't actually refute anything in the Reuters article. They just throw out a bunch of miscellaneous information. They brag that they've raised over $600 million over the past two years, but they've already burnt through almost all of this money. Instead of being a good thing, this actually highlights the company's unsustainable rate of cash burn. They claim they're in discussions with potential investors, but just because you have a discussion doesn't mean a deal will actually get done. They'll burn upwards of $200 million in 2024. As of the time of recording this video, their market cap is only $150 million. It's hard to imagine why any investor would be willing to inject this much capital into a company that's been such a failure. The strangest part of Canoe's post is when they say they are not in the consumer market, they are in the commercial market. It is true that they've never delivered a vehicle to a consumer. Their minuscule numbers of deliveries to date have thus far only been to commercial customers. But what about their bulldog pickup truck which they unveiled just a few months ago? Based on their promotional video, it clearly looks like it's intended for the consumer market and they've accepted $100 deposits from consumers for their lifestyle minivan. Are these not going to be delivered? Are the deposits going to be refunded? They change their strategy so frequently that it's very difficult to understand what their current strategy even is. Finally, they brag about having a backlog of orders, but a backlog is only worth anything to the extent that you can fulfill the orders. Thus far, they've only been able to produce 22 cars. All things considered, I'd be very surprised if Canoe survives through the end of this year. They had cool looking prototypes that got investors excited in the beginning, but their incoherent business strategy and lack of manufacturing expertise has left them with only a slim chance of success. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about Canoe? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.